Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jeff Unser Jr. <laughs> you're, a, you're a black blob on my camera screen. Uh, where are we anyway? <laughs> We're at a raceway. Um, California Speedway. California. <laughs> Yeah, gonna go see the. Uh, We're gonna see technology. Is it the Target 400 or the Toyota 400? We're gonna see Toyota. the Toyota 400. We're gonna see technology in action. Who says technology can't be cool? We're gonna see some fast technology. Who says windows technology. can't be cool? Who says windows can't be used in cool places? Yeah. Well, cool. We'll. Uh, we're going into the California Speedway here, and uh, we'll shoot some more when we get inside. So. Uh, who are you? My name is Jacques Lazier. I drive the 10 car for Target Chip Ganassi Racing. And how fast does this car go? Uh, well, we're going to be on pole this week, at least we hope we are. And, and I, I would assume that we're going to be here at this two-mile oval at Fontana. I'm guessing we're going to be running probably about 218. Will be the, the 218 pole. miles an hour. 218 miles an hour around two-mile oval should be the pole at, here at, at Fontana this year. And uh, let's go over here away from that motor. Away from the motor. Yeah. They're raising the platform on it. What kind of skills do you need to, to have to drive a race car? Uh, obviously, there's there's a lot of stuff that we do. You have to start at a young age, and uh, you know I started off in motocross, and then went up to go karts, ran SCCA, which is Sports Car Club of America, and then from there I just kind of worked my way up. There's a hierarchy that you have to take, and I ran Indy Lights and uh, another series called uh, American Indy Car Series. Uh, which they use older Indy cars with stock block Chevrolets and, and, and some other engines in there and, and uh, you know went up to there and then in, in 99 uh, my father and I decided we was time to go Indy car racing we put a program together to go out and get some rookie miles under it and uh, you know just test as much as we could and then I, I signed up with a couple teams and the rest is history. Uh, if, if I got in an Indy car and tried to drive it, what would my first experience be like? Uh, the first, probably your first experience would be you'd, you'd probably, honestly, you'd probably stall it a couple times leaving the pits. They are extremely uh, violent trying to leave the pits, uh, obviously, because we only run uh, two, or I'm sorry, three liters, and with that small of an engine, we don't have a lot of torque down low. We, we basically have designed these engines for high RPMs, and. Uh, at that time, you know, you got to really rev them up high up to about 7,000 RPMs and then drop the clutch and you get a lot of wheel spin. And, and then, uh, you know, with Target, we, or with Toyota, we do have some traction control. So then the traction control kicks in. Basically, you go from 0 to 60 in, in about two and a half seconds. And, uh, you know, now, it, a normal road not, car not goes your normal road car. It, 0 to 60 in what, 20 seconds? Yeah, uh, not quite that. That's okay. low. I mean, your, your average car probably does it in about eight and a half or nine seconds from 0 to 60. And, you know, but obviously these cars are more meant for going 225 miles an hour. And, you know, honestly, at uh, about 180 miles an hour, we're producing enough downforce with these cars with the, the front wing and the rear wing. And then uh, there's also another wing underneath the car. Uh, we're getting enough downforce at 100 and about 175 miles an hour that we could drive the car upside down, you know, on a ceiling. So if you could find someplace big enough and get up to speed and roll the car over, you could ride it upside down. But... Uh, no, they they are violent. They are designed for uh, obviously high speeds, and, and uh, Indianapolis is our fastest track. We do about uh, 230 there, uh, on, and about 235 on the straightaways. Uh, you got to go flat into the corner, and obviously at 200 miles an hour, you're traveling the length of a football field every second. So the track's only 75 feet wide, and, and uh, you're basically your margin of error is just a couple tenths of a second whether or not you're going to make the corner or not. So, How physically demanding is the race? I, I'll be honest with you. I played uh, hockey growing up. I grew up in Vail, Colorado. I played hockey. Uh, I played football. I also played lacrosse and soccer. And I'll tell you, by far, racing is the most physically demanding sport I've ever done. Why, why is it? You, you wouldn't expect that to be true. Well, you wouldn't, but uh, like I was talking about the margin of error. You really don't have any margin of error out here. Uh, even when you come into the pits, you're, you're making so many different changes to the car. You're into the pit stop for, for basically 10 to 12 seconds. They're changing four tires. They're putting in 30 gallons of, of methanol, uh, which is basically an alcohol that we run rather than gasoline. And then basically you're back going again. And uh, that's So you have about 12 seconds that you're, you're resetting the fuel. You're making some changes to the car. So it really isn't any time to rest. I personally think that, that uh, one of the finest athletes of all time has to be Michael Jordan. I mean, he's one of the most driven, was one of the most spectacular athletes. And without a doubt, 
he had a great day shooting basketball when he was what, 20 for 40. He shot 50%. You can't only make 50% of the corners out here. I, I can tell you that you know there's a lot of people that have hit the wall, and the wall never loses. So yeah. you basically always have to be on top of your game. You know, we're, we're out here going 110% for basically four hours. Wow. And that's one of the reasons why it's so physically and mentally demanding is you just, there is no timeouts. There are no, uh, you know, substitutions or anything like that. And no halftime. You're basically going for four hours straight. Right. How has technology changed the race? The race? Well, I, I think a lot of, and that's the reason you've seen a lot of uh, car manufacturers that are supporting these types of racing, uh, Toyota, Honda, and Chevrolet. Obviously, a lot of the stuff that they're learning uh, with racing, they're be able to uh, carry over to their, their street cars. A perfect example is all, all the cars you see these, these days, they have the, what they call their impact zones. And uh, basically, it's designed that when you have an accident, the car crumples. And you have your crumple zone, and, and that diminishes the energy so that the driver inside of the, basically the cockpit of, the, of your car stays safe. That's something that they learn basically from IndyCar racing. We've designed the cars over the last basically 20 years to absorb energy so that the drivers could be okay when they hit the wall at 100. Have, have you wrecked a car? Uh, I, I have had a couple pretty bad crashes. I actually had one, uh, another guy hit me from behind and I hit the wall at 175 miles an hour backwards. It was a 120 G hit and I actually fractured three vertebrae in my back. So, yeah, surgery, all that kind of good stuff. But hey, you know, it wasn't my fault and I'm back racing again and, and obviously I'm with, uh, in my opinion, the, the finest team in, in IndyCar racing. And that's uh, Target Chip Ganassi Racing. Yeah. Now, who's that guy? <laughs> uh, that used to be a driver with the team, and, and uh, unfortunately he is no longer here, but now I'm here. So I'm, I'm glad. His, his name is Darren Manning, and he's a very talented driver. I just don't think he uh, wanted to keep driving for the rest of this year. Yeah, very cool. Um, how, how has the technology in terms of the telemetry changed how, how drivers drive the cars? Uh, it's, it's definitely making it... it if we're going to see the telemetry system, yeah, that's you're, where you're why we're here. Yeah, you're to see everything. And, and basically, you can see everything that the driver's doing. The, our engineers can see what we're doing. Um, when, when you say everything, what, you mean like you, how hard you're stepping on the gas or how hard you're braking? Basically, everything you can think of. It'll tell you the G-forces that you're doing, the speed you're doing, uh, any kind of changes we're making in the car. We do have some adjustments that we can do from inside the car. We have a weight jacker, which basically transfer weight from the left front to the right rear depending on whether or not the car is pushing, meaning the front of the car wants to go up and hit the wall first, or if the car is loose, meaning the rear of the car wants to go up and... You can drive a car that's pushing a little bit, you can't drive a car that's loose for very long because it just basically burns up the right rear tire and then you're, you're going to be in the wall. So The telemetry shows everything the engine's doing. It tells you the water temperature, the fuel pressure, uh, the oil pressure, basically everything you want to know. It tells you instantaneously what kind of fuel mileage you're getting, um, and then we, you know, at, at that point we, we sit down as an engineering group and we, we have our meetings and, and uh, the drivers come in and say, you know, this is what the cars are doing. They are able to take the telemetry, everything that they've learned from our last run, they put it down on basically a couple of sheets of paper and say, okay, yeah, we can make these changes and these changes. And then, you know, the driver still has to go out there on the track and say, yeah, these are the changes I like or no, I don't like the changes. Right. Even though the changes might be quicker, it might make the car a little too loose or something like that, and something that the driver can't handle. So it, it allows us, basically, in a nutshell, it allows us to fine-tune the cars a lot easier than in the old days. Right. Um, for a new fan, how do I appreciate the race? What, what are some maybe three or four tri things that I should be looking for during the race? One thing that our, our series does and has been for the last, basically, five years is we run extremely fast, extremely close, and it's a very competitive series. Um, qualifying, there's, there's probably going to be a three mile an hour drop from the pole all the way down to 20 second spot, which seems pretty big, except for when you're doing 218 miles an hour around here, you're basically talking about less than half a second is separating the pole from the last place starter. Yeah. Uh, with that, once you get out there and you're out on track, the cars will run faster when they're running uh, nose to tail. You basically you, you spread the wind and the resistance over two cars. Uh, so we'll actually pick up speeds during the race. On top of that, we have a tendency that we want to run two and sometimes three wide. 
all day long around the track, and it'll be a big group of probably uh, the top group's going to probably be 12 cars, and then you'll have another probably uh, 10 cars behind that that'll be chasing up, and they're going to be running side by side all day long. Wow. So within, what, within inches of each other. Let's say I'm in turn three here. What, what should I be watching for? What, you know, it goes by so fast. It, it really does go by so fast, and that's one of the beauties of, of our of our sport and obviously of our series. Uh, there is other series that run here. Uh, one of them will basically go around the track at about 185, and we're going around, like I said, at you know close to 220 miles an hour. So we run around here significantly faster than any other series. Right. Um, you know, we, we do run extremely close together. You know, obviously we're open wheel. Anytime you tangle wheels, one car is going to go airborne. And uh, so you have to have a lot of respect for yourself and a lot of respect for your fellow drivers because we are basically in 2002 was our first race here, and, and uh, I finished second. And the last lap, the guy who won and myself, we rubbed wheels with smoke coming off the tires at 220 miles an hour for the entire lap. You know, and that's that's how close and that's how exciting this this form of racing is. Now, how many drivers are on the target team? Uh, we do have three drivers on the on the target. Are Massey all three going to be on the track team. on no, Sunday? Unfortunately, one of our drivers was hurt. Okay. Uh, in a pretty pretty Very scary looking accident. Okay. Uh, he is fine. He's just uh, kind of recuperating. And uh, so there's just going to be two of us. There's going to be myself and uh, my fellow driver Scott Dixon. Okay. And. Are, is it uh, pretty uh, competitive between the two of you, no, or do you it, help it really, each other really out? Is. We, we definitely want to help each other out. Uh, obviously, it gets competitive the last 10 laps. That's when, uh, basically, you're trying to... All the rules say, go out the window. <laughs> well, well, no, there's, there's, there's one rule that never goes out the window. You don't want to take your teammate out. Yeah. No matter what happens, you don't want to take your teammate out. We will work together to make sure that we can be up there in first and second. When we're up there in first and second, then the plan is, is will the two of us go for the win, and we want to make sure that the other person finishes second. That's yeah. the plan. Very cool. Well, thanks for staying a few Thank minutes uh, talking it. about your sport. It's, no uh, problem. I'll, I'll love your sport. Sure. Thank you.